Well, thank you so much for uh, having me today. And, uh, you know, the, the scenario I'm painting here is, is, is very, uh, very common, right? You go to something like this, uh, great hashy talk, or you start to learn about something um, called vault because you've, you need to secure some secrets and maybe you need to start to leverage dynamic secret capability. Maybe you even want to kind of like do, am I sharing my screen? I'm not even sharing my screen yet. Let me start with doing that. Can you see my screen? That would be a good start. Yep, I can see it here right now and I'm just waiting to see if it comes up on YouTube. <laughs> It'd be fine though. Thank you. It's got a little bit of a lag, so we're just <laughs> waiting here. Yeah, well, that was my practice run there a couple minutes early. No worries. Yeah, you look good. Your slides are up on YouTube as well. Fantastic. So just to reframe, um, so you've attended HashiTalk or maybe your boss has and they're like, man, this vault stuff's really, really cool and we need to start looking at it, right? You, We think the dynamic uh, secrets component of it, the secrets management component, some of the encryption as a service component really makes sense within our environment. So lucky you, you get to go explore. And one of the things that you do as you, you know, go through your Google search is you find a really awesome resource called HashiCorp Learn. And you, come, you stumble upon the Vault environment uh, for HashiCorp Learn and it tells you how you can install Vault and download it and kind of get it started. And inevitably you come across this command. You've downloaded Vault and you come across this Vault Server Dash Dev command. Super powerful, super convenient because you can literally run Vault on your local system and get things running and start to kind of tinker around with all the with all the coolness that Vault has to offer. But you start to get some warnings. In fact, when you run that Vault Server Dev environment, there's a huge warning that starts right away, which pretty much says, "Don't run this in production. This is going to only run in like a very uh, in in memory. Everything that you're going to store in here, as soon as you tear down this process, is going to be gone." But you're okay with that. In fact. Um, you're gonna go in and, and, and check out the UI a little bit. Really cool UI for Vault, and you, you log in to kind of that, that local IP. And the other thing that kind of catches your attention real quick is that all this stuff is running over HTTP. And if you zoom in kind of on the Chrome message here, it says, hey, this website that you're entering, you should be careful because you don't wanna really store any sensitive information on this site or passwords or credit card numbers, but you're scratching your head a little bit thinking, wait a minute, this is Vault. It's going to like take care of all of my secrets, right? And so this kind of starts to make you wonder, okay, there's probably more that I need to, to look into. But you carry on and you go forward and you go ahead and you actually log in. And you're prompted with yet another warning. And this warning says, hey, you logged in with the root token. And so you have a, a tremendous amount of control and power, but be careful with that because, you know, it is the root token. And so I, I guess I would venture to ask folks who are either new to this process or who have maybe even been running it for a little while, do you use your root token in Vault for everything that you do in Vault? Are your Vault policies you know, kind of wide open? Uh, are there things in there that maybe provide way too much access? Do you simply just kind of, you know, certificates are hard and we don't really want to deal with, you know, TLS on this. So uh, do you simply ignore those TLS or maybe take the uh, an, an untrusted certificate? And then magically does this proof of concept that you've kind of been tasked to build all of a sudden evolve into this critical infrastructure? Let's face it, Vault is part of our critical infrastructure. And so we want to make sure that we are careful with making sure we harden it and, and protect it. So in this talk, I'm gonna show you really some simple steps that you can take to, uh, to build really a repeatable and, and a consistent hardened vault uh, proof of concept, or you can even take this out of the proof of concept phase a little bit and just build a vault environment. My name is Gabe Mentz. Uh, I work for a HashiCorp partner called Riverpoint Technology, where I help customers design, plan, build, and ultimately operate uh, their infrastructure. Uh, you know, a number of different certif certifications in the vault and Terraform space. 
and also I'm a big advocate with the community. Uh, in fact, I, we run a local community here, which is centered around technology, craft beer, and barbecue. Uh, we like to call that V brisket. So um, now that I'm hungry, let's go ahead and carry on with the rest of the talk. So what are we gonna build today? Um, we're gonna go ahead and build a highly available vault uh, design. We're going to put this up in uh, up into AWS, but it certainly doesn't have to be that. In fact, most of the design principles we're going to talk about today could be repeated inside, you know, your local data center. Maybe that's running on uh, VMware or maybe up into Azure or GCP. Um, we are going to design for some availability. So we're going to use Council, uh, which is the best practice recommendation from HashiCorp to uh, to be our back end for Vault. For those who aren't familiar, Vault doesn't actually store any of this data inside its, uh, itself. It has this concept of storage backends, which is where all of the encrypted secrets and all the encrypted data lives. Uh, we're gonna leverage Council for that. And we're gonna go ahead and deploy this with uh, a little bit of resiliency in mind. So um, we are gonna go ahead, because this is a proof of concept, a three node Vault, three node uh, Council, uh, we are leveraging auto scaling groups and through configuration, we could very easily up the number of vault nodes or console nodes if we needed to for, for scalability purposes. So the manual way, right? And uh, I, I, I've done a lot of this uh, where you kind of go and you start to read about vault and you get your server stood up and then you kind of run it as a process and you, you kind of put some certificates in here and then you get the council environment stood up and, and all that is, is looking great. And you know you, you kind of go through all these processes, but if you were asked to repeat it, it would be, um, well, I guess maybe kind of hard. So let's go ahead and think about a better approach to do this, right? So um, we are at HashiTalks, of course. So let's talk about you know deploying these things in in, in a uh, infrastructure as code uh, mentality uh, with with uh, using production hardened images. So we're going to actually go ahead and secure our, our vault images that we're going to use for our deployment, and ultimately make this uh, reusable uh, and and configure it in an automated way. Just a quick shout out. Uh, everything I'm showing here is part of the open source set of products. Um, in fact, I'm going to use a Terraform Vault AWS module. It's provided by the Gruntwork team. For those who aren't familiar, Gruntwork is a fantastic uh, company who's created a bunch of uh, uh, an infrastructure as code library, and they have happened graciously to uh, open source their uh, AWS um, module. So we will be following some of that methodology. Um, in that methodology, we're going to really go through this workflow. We're going to first create our images. We're going to deploy those images using Terraform. And then we're going to go ahead and configure our Vault environment to, to be more secure than just that Vault server dash dev. HashiCorp actually produces the production hardening guide. I would recommend that everyone um, check this out who are who are really keen on you know deploying vault in a secure way uh, there's a learn track on this and in fact there's a number of best practices that HashiCorp provides to really make sure that your your vault environment is is stood up in in, in, the, in the most uh, secure and hardened way uh, don't run things as root make sure you have TLS certs in here uh, embrace the concept of immutable upgrades. Make sure you're disabling your command history and, and limiting SSH and firewall access into your environments. A lot of things that seem relatively obvious, but uh, check out that production hardening guide to, to understand that. In fact, I'm going to take those concepts and I'm going to showcase to you where those fall really within the um, deployment uh, components, right? So in the first case, we're going to go ahead and look at image creation. Um, we all love certificates, right? And uh, we're, we're working to, uh, to make this easier as possible. So we're actually going to use Let's Encrypt. For those who aren't familiar, Let's Encrypt is a free, it's an automated open uh, CA, um, which is really, really fantastic and, and, and makes the whole uh, creating of certificates relatively trivial. In fact, there's a Terraform provider for it. So this, these are the steps that I use to create my cert, right? I uh, download the, 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 the from the repo, I do an init and an apply within Terraform, and I ultimately I get my certificate, I get my private and public keys. We're gonna take those keys then, and then we're gonna build these vault 
uh, images. Uh, well, it just so happens HashiCorp has a great uh, image uh, creation tool called Packer. Probably many on this call are familiar with that. Uh, we're going to leverage Packer in the back Packer build process to take a lot of those production hardened processes, wrap them into our Packer uh, manifest, and uh, as well as our Let's Encrypt certificates. And ultimately, we're going to go ahead and deploy um, these images up into our AWS environment. So, cool, we have started down the path of doing this really in a repeatable and efficient way. We've accomplished a number of the hard and best practices and uh, we're, we're really manifesting everything as kind of infrastructure as code. But let's go to the next step. And certainly the next step is really about uh, getting this deployed and what other tools should we use than Terraform to do that, right? So we're gonna create a private vault cluster. The module that I'm using is that hash, is that uh, um, vault AWS module. Uh, it really helps us with, you know, continuing to build on this infrastructure as code mentality. We're gonna use those images that we just created in the previous steps. And we're really gonna use this within a reusable and really verified way. So, uh, Download that repo, modify your variables to fit your environment, and ultimately run the plan. A couple of notes for those who aren't familiar with the Terraform module registry. There is a registry out there of uh, really kind of best practice modules. It makes a lot of the Terraform coding just kind of, um, you don't have to really worry about it all that much. I'm gonna pivot and just show you that real quick. Um, if you go out to the Terraform module registry and do a quick search uh, within the registry for, let's go ahead and look at vault. Um, there's a number of different pieces that pop up. It has been my experience that it's best to probably check that verified box because there are a number of modules, unfortunately, that are up in the registry that aren't even Terraform 12 compliant, right? So use something that's being actually maintained and, uh, um, and, and is supported here. So uh, this is the module that we're gonna use for Terraform and AWS. And it happens to be the one that I showed by the grunt work team who has open sourced that. In fact, if you wanna take a deeper dive into the actual module itself, and the one that we will be using is under their examples environment underneath vault private cluster. So some great documentation about what we're gonna actually go ahead and build here. You can see the deployment steps are, are really, really that, sport, or that uh, straightforward. So let me go ahead and back to the slides here quickly. Boom, I have it, right? So just like that, through the power of magic and a little bit of time, we have a vault deployed infrastructure, uh, three by three node that's running up in my AWS environment. In fact, I have a video piece of that and I'll share all of these at the end. So this is a, a sample of what the Terraform output for this looks like. I have deployed all of these inside a private set of subnets. Once again, there's a lot of articles up there about how to do this on the public internet. Probably not a best practice to put your vault environment out on a public environment. So I'm going to head and, and going to use all private IPs, all private subnets that are all firewalled, which is following all of these production best practices. And um, I'm actually setting up a VPN server. So that VPN server allows me to go ahead and connect into this environment and to be able to start to take the next steps that I want to. All right, the next step is to go ahead and uh, log into my vault environment and, and log into the vault nodes. And as everybody may be aware, you need to uh, unseal vault. So I am using console here. So I might as well use it to uh, sign a, determine where my private IPs are. Council has this idea of service discovery and I'm running the council agent on each of my vault nodes, which allows me to find exactly where those vault IPs are uh, in case one, uh, you know, turns up or turns down, or maybe I have to rebuild it and follow that kind of immutable upgrade process. And you can see that those three nodes are, are up, but their service checks are failing. And well, that's, that's to be expected actually, because the service checks themselves, uh, these nodes aren't unsealed yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at uh, my vault node one here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and connect. I can see already that it's asking me to go to HTTPS, which is a good sign. Uh, that means that my image is there. It's not quite trusted yet. That's OK, because I'm going to the IP directly. Uh, and we will uh, we'll overcome that in just a minute here. But uh, this is the vault initialize unseal process. I'm going to go ahead and enter the number of keys that uh, and the initial root token. It prompts me for all of that. And it allows me to kind of download those and distribute those um, to all my folks in case I need to ever unseal vault. And I'm going to go ahead with the, with the unseal process. So I have taken the, uh, the unseal keys and taken them off screen. Uh, just so you know, they are sensitive pieces of information. I'm going to take a go. I'm going to go ahead and um, push each of those keys here, and you can see that now I've already, you know, provided two of the three keys that are required to to unseal this vault node. So there we have it. Vault has been unsealed. And um, now I'm going to actually go ahead and what you'll see is I've redirected myself to the well-known name that matches my certificate that I've created. I've got a domain name out there called couchtocloud.com and I happen to have a vault instance on there, which I, it's, it's a private DNS entry. Um, it's actually, it's, it's going to council to, to go ahead and, and resolve that. But most importantly, what I wanna show here is that, hey, I've got a certificate that's valid, right? I've got a TLS cert. Um, it's been created and issued by the Let's Encrypt team. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually see, you know, uh, it's, it's relatively short-lived. I didn't create like a five-year one or anything like that. You can actually uh, rotate these because I'm, I'm automating it, so, so why not? Um, I'm gonna log in with my root token and, you know, life is pretty good. So once we have our vault deployed, we've got our nodes unsealed, we have validated that uh, we can com connect to it in kind of a, uh, over HTTPS. The next step is to go ahead and configure it. And this is where there's a lot of folks who do a lot of manual configuration, but let's go ahead and continue along our automated process and run our configuration in, in that fashion. Right, so um, I'm going to leverage the Terraform Vault provider. So there's a provider for Terra for Vault um, that's that, that you can utilize within Terraform. Um, in this case, I'm going to use it to set an audit path within my environment. I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of different local users, but I could use this to to really configure any auth method for Vault, whether that be LDAP or uh, GitHub or any of the different auth, there's tons of them out there. Um, I'm going to create some policies to kind of lock down those users to what they can and, and sh uh, can't do within Vault. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to show creating a secret with Terraform. Um, there's another talk later on. This is probably not the best use to actually create secrets using the Terraform Vault provider because Terraform staves all this stuff in a clear text file. But I just wanted to showcase it. Uh, but I'm going to really start to leverage this this configuration um, using the Terraform Vault provider. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go ahead into um, my my builder. Now this could be a uh, I, I have a, a host that I'm using to do this build, but this could be a, you know a GitLab runner, or this could be a Jenkins worker, or this could be uh, anything really uh, to, to to go into play as long as it has access to your vault environment. I'm going to go ahead and download a piece of code, which is just several Terraform files. Uh, it happens to be in my config vault directly directory and I'm going to walk through the Terraform uh, dance of initing and planning and then ultimately applying it. And I'm going to go ahead and issue my root token so that it can log in and perform all of this configuration um, at, with, the, with, the, with the root token. A couple of things I want to highlight here is I can now manage all of the vault policies really as code. In fact, here's the SecOps admin policy, which is pretty much allowing me to, you know, enable engines and to be able to enable auth methods. And uh, if I ever wanted to either build upon these or change these or maybe even reset them because people have now modified them manually, I can I have the ability to do that now through the Terraform vault provider. Uh, once my plan looks good, 
I'm going to go ahead and execute and apply. I got excited about showing all of these things. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it. I'm going to once again issue that root token and say go for it. And here we go. Here's my output. Here's what I've created. Um, I've gone ahead and I've enabled audit logging. So I'm actually logging all of the vault information into this local log file. I've created a security operations policy uh, along with a, uh, a local user. Um, I've enabled a KV secrets engine. I've even put a secret in there. I've got a vault user and I've also got a, uh, a vault admin policy and user. So now I can sign out of my, with my root token and I can validate what just happened is, uh, is working, right? So I'm gonna log in with my vault admin, uh, username and password, and it's giving me the access that I kind of can would expect. In fact, if I look at the policies here, I can see that, you know, sure enough, there's the stuff that, that's been applied. If I go into the um, users themselves, I can go ahead and look at those. And I can, and, and now I, through the power of the Vault Terraform provider, I, um, I can configure Vault. And, and get away from having to use the root token for everything. Now the root token is actually still enabled here. Uh, the next step that we're gonna have is once we verify that everything looks good and that I haven't really locked myself out of Vault, um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, enable audit logging and uh, actually list it, I've already enabled it. And I can see now that, you know, sure enough, it's, 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 it's audit, it, auditing everything into that var log audit uh, file. And that really kind of takes us to the, the next step. Uh, and that's the, uh, the ability to uh, start to look at those logs. So I'm gonna, um, the tool that I'm using here is best production hard and best practice is to kind of centrally manage my logs and then to see what's going on within my vault environment. I'm gonna uh, leverage Datadog to do that. Uh, so I'm centralizing everything and I'm gonna go ahead and look at and detect any root logins and, and see if, uh, if people are using the root token uh, by looking at that log. So here's my login to Datadog. Uh, so the Datadog agent is running on my vault server. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking all of those logs that have been enabled and I'm, I'm, I'm centrally bringing them up into Datadog. Datadog has a log engine here that I can search. I can also look at all the telemetry of my vault environment if I want, but uh, for the purpose of this talk, I want to I just look at the logs. And I can see that sure enough, I've got a number of different logs. They're all coming up into Datadog. I can kind of parse these things and look at them if I want to. And I can see that sure enough, this is what you know that vault provider did. It created a username. I, here's my login. Uh, here's the policies that are assigned to my login. And I can you know now check to see if people are using the root token uh, within my vault environment. Um, once I'm comfortable that I've got logging set up, I've got the users are all set up, I've got the right level of privileges, it's time to hit the button. It's time to issue the revoke. It's time to get rid of that root token, right? So just get in the habit of doing that. We can always recreate that if we need to, but you really just revoke that root token and, and let's, let's operate this in kind of a, a more hardened and secured way. All right. So that really completes the overall build out of our images, our deployments, and ultimately our configurations here. Um, the last kind of set of steps that we can we could we could do is uh, we've only unsealed one of the vault nodes. We can go back into console, and you can see here, boom, that root token uh, failed when I tried to log into it. I can go back into console. I can see my vault node is healthy, and I can now go and unseal the rest of my nodes. Kind of in the interest of time, I won't bore you with the entire unseal process here, but you know, I'm going into each one of these, I'm adding in my keys and I'm, I'm making sure that everything comes up and is working.
and I pivot back into council and I just make sure everything inside council is happy with, uh, with it. And it is green all across the board. I've got my active nodes. I've got my standby nodes. I've got healthy environment. I'm auditing it and uh, I've, I've, I've secured it with, uh, with, with my users and, and my auth. So that is the genesis of the talk. I wanted to just do a couple of cool, quick shout outs to people uh, that have been helping me with build out this talk. First of all, Dan Stover, he's a solution engineer at HashiCorp. He really inspired me to kind of put this down and write this, right? We've been building on a number of these automated vault environments and, and why not just wrap it up and share it, right? And then Brian Crossan, you know, vault guru practitioner instructor uh peer reviewed this talk with me gave me a lot of good you know feedback uh check out brian's getting started vault uh and advanced course up on udemy and then my colleague sam kadavid sam uh fantastic helped me with the contributions to the vault terraform provider portion of this talk as well as as the data dog configuration um, reference materials, tons of them out there. I've tried to break this down into the hardening pieces, the image creation, deployment, configuration, really that entire workflow. Here are the links that I use to kind of bring all of this together, uh, as well as the audit logging. I'm really excited about a lot of the hashy talks that are coming up, especially the stuff from the trenches in terms of using the Terraform Vault provider, managing Vault with Terraform. I think there's some really good nuggets here. As soon as those links become available, I'll update my slides with that as well. Um, all the recordings that I kind of walked through a little bit and the, some of those that I didn't walk through, I've put up and I made those available as well. So how do you create that Let's Encrypt key? How do you create this, you know, image um, with Packer and, and get your, your vault environment ready and hardened and then ultimately the deployment and configuration of that? So I think that does it. And uh, hopefully that was a lot to kind of unpack here in a, uh, in a, uh, in a shorter period of time. But uh, with that, uh, I think we may have some time for some Q&A. Fantastic, thank you. That was great. Um, we do have some Q&A coming in. So I guess the first question is, you have a lot of resources and links, which is like, thank you, that's fantastic. Yeah. And um, some questions were about if you're going to be sending out your slides for people to be able to access those. Absolutely. I would be happy to. I think Katie's already put together and she's aggregating all of that stuff together. I'll put them up on my blog and I'll also put them in the, uh, the general hashy talk environment so that people can consume that. Perfect. Thank you. So um, something else that came in was, I, I actually like this question a lot because I haven't been able to do this yet, but what would take this from a proof of concept up to being production level? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I, I've done all of this stuff kind of by myself, right? Or with a little bit of peer review. Uh, this is definitely a team effort. So, you know, working within your organization, understanding which of those best practices and those hardening guides you want to implement, and then working with really the subject matter experts to, to determine which ones you're going to put in, and then what, how you can validate that test, right? So because we've automated a lot of this work, we could you know, relatively, it wouldn't be out of bounds to think that we could put this in kind of like maybe a CI/CD pipelining with some automated test framework and, and, and to perform some tests as this stuff is being created, as it's being imaged, as it's being, um, as it's being deployed. I would also, I'm, I'm, deploying smaller nodes within AWS because I'm trying to, you know, keep my bill relatively low, but there's some sizing recommendations out there in terms of how big your vault node should look and how big your council and what your frequency and performance activity. Enable that telemetry within vault to really understand how that performance looks, enable that logging, use a centralized performance or uh, uh, logging tool, something similar to Datadog to really kind of understand your environment. I would say go ahead and perform some of those immutable upgrades, right? Go from Vault 1.2 to Vault 1.3 and figure out what that looks like. Are things operating as you would expect? Um, those are the, those those procedural kind of pieces, I think, are, are what you would want to do to, to kind of move this in. The idea of this talk was really like to get a proof of concept going, but to make it relatively realistic to what a production environment may look like, right? So. 
can I just jump in there and just add to that as well, just from my experience as well? Um, yeah, please do. Things like that. So I think everything you said is absolutely spot on. Um, but I think you also need to think about uh, like your backup strategy. Uh, so things like uh, console uh, snapshots and how you're going to back up this that is snapshot into. Um, your frequency of that and how, how to make sure that your console snapshots don't fall out of sync. Um, and then also the other thing I'll add to that is your IAM uh, policy structure has to match your organizational security standards. Um, so for me, once you get those things in place, added to the things that you mentioned, that's when you can start getting to the point to say, okay, you can now trust this platform to hold secrets and have some confidence that the secrets are only going to be accessed by people or services that uh, are supposed to consume specific secrets. Um, I just wanted to add that in. There. Yeah, it's great talking. additions. Absolutely. Cause you know, things are going to happen and you have to make sure you can recover from them. Right. So thank you. Appreciate the feedback on that. Fantastic. Thank you. And also, hello, DevOps Rob. DevOps Jack, he says hi. <laughs> but, hey. <laughs> yay. We're like yay. Twitter name friends. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> thank you. So that was a great presentation. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing your slides after. And thank you again for coming on today. Yeah. Good. Best of luck to all the other talks and uh, looking forward to consuming and learning some stuff throughout the day. Thanks for putting this on. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.